And joining us once again to answer your Facebook questions is the Lieutenant Governor and the state's COVID-19 liaison, Dr. Josh Green. Ready for the questions, Doc? You bet. All right, the first question is from Ohuna Nakai. Now, she wants to know, with the upcoming lifting of travel restrictions for residents who were vaccinated in the state of Hawaii, how do you prove that someone's a resident? I can't find anyone. Can anyone obtain a state or Hawaii ID or duplicate driver's license in the state and live elsewhere? By looking at your vaccination card, how can you tell it was done in the state? Uh, that's a great question. So actually, it's because we have the data uh, when people get their vaccine in Hawaii, it gets uploaded into our vaccine management system and or at the at the um, at the hospital that it was performed at or at the health center. So we can get access to that data. Some of this will be the honor system. But in general, we know all of our people who got vaccinated and we're not trying to pry. We're just saying that that's what we can verify when we can verify vaccines from the mainland. That's when we'll open up phase two and have people use their vaccination cards to travel from the mainland to Hawaii without having to be pre-tested. But we have a pretty good system. So basically, it doesn't say on the card exactly where you got vaccinated, but it's in the state system? Yes, it's in the state system, and that's how we can verify. OK. The next question is from Moku. She wants to know, why aren't parents not allowed to watch their children play sports? We as parents work just as hard, if not harder, to ensure that our kids get what they need to participate and not allowing us to watch our kids, unacceptable. Uh, parents should be allowed to watch their kids play sports, and it's something that I'll continue to press for with the mayors and the governor. I don't think that's a concern. Just parents, please remember to wear masks if you're at big gatherings of sporting events once that gets approved. I think it's uh, coming soon. All right, the next question is from Christina. She wants to know, will my rights be protected as a non-vaccinated citizen? Will I be able to freely travel same as a vaccinated citizen? The answer is yes. Uh, that's why we're leaving intact all the safe travels program where you can just go get the pretest. People can also apply for exemptions on a lot of different levels. If for some reason they couldn't get tested, they're an essential worker, or if they don't want to be vaccinated, I think that there will be some considerations that we need to make because there are some people that simply can't be vaccinated and we ought to try to protect them as well. But people are looking at it uh, through a negative lens when they ask that question. In essence, this is an expansion of people's rights because we're just adding one more way to travel. It was very difficult to allow for travel all across the world, globe, state, when you had a rampant pandemic uh, killing people. So now that that's lifting, we hope to lift it with some of these new options like this travel exception with the, uh, with the card. All right, the next question is from Nohea. Will the DOE require COVID vaccination for public schools if the state is liable if they have, will the state be liable if they have an adverse reaction short or long term? I'm personally against that, and I'll tell you why. It's still number one under emergency use authorization. Although the vaccines have been deemed safe, I felt safe. I took it. My wife is taking it. My daughter's going to take it. She's 14. So we feel safe and, and lead by that example. However, it's not something that's been tested for 15 years. And also, I think we will get to herd immunity even without that, uh, that pressure. So there are, keep in mind, lots of, of precedents where we do have requirements for vaccination for schools so we don't have outbreaks of meningitis and, and other terrible diseases. But in this particular case, we've never mandated that someone have to get this kind of shot, and I don't think it will happen this time either. All right. And the final question is from Chris. He wants to know, how is the state going to make equal access to the vaccine passport for those who cannot take the shot because of health issues? Will the state be offering free pre-travel tests since the vaccines are free? If not, isn't it a violation of ADA and HIPAA laws? I don't believe it's a violation, but I really like the idea. If someone simply can't get the shot for some reason or another, I don't think we should penalize them. And it would be a very appropriate thing to offer some free testing. We have received some resources from the federal government and we have state dollars. I think that's a very good idea and I'll recommend that to the team. Going forward, a lot of these questions that you guys ask me are, in many ways, the way we create policy. So I thank you for that. All right, and we thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for answering our Facebook questions as well as providing your perspective. Have a great week, and we will talk to you next week. You bet. Take care.